ओम रोगान शेषान अपहंसितुष्टा रुष्टातु कामान शकलान विष्टन त्वमस्तितानां विपत्नरानं तमास्तिता हि अश्रयतां प्रयान्ति ओम शान्ति 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 हि ओ मदर डिवाइन यू डिस्ट्रॉय ऑल द ईल्स physical, mental or spiritual, when you are pleased. But when wrathful, you frustrate all the desires longed for. No calamity befalls upon the life of one who takes total refuge in you. These people become the refuge of others who have sought for you and you alone. Om peace, peace, peace be unto us all. So today our topic is fighting the demon within. <coughs> this month we have celebrated here the Mother Durga, the worship of Mother Durga. There we find Durga is the image where we find the Divine Mother is destroying the demons and restoring the peace and harmony in the hearts of gods or godlike people. It happened, the story goes, that gods were in the heaven and these demonic forces become powerful and they gradually conquered all the devas, the positions of gods. In Hinduism you know there are so many gods. One god taking care of the rain, another god taking care of the fire, another god taking care of there are so many aspects, wealth, prosperity, education. And wisdom. So, so they are all for no fault of theirs, these demonic forces went and fought and dethroned them from their own abode in the heaven. And they became like ordinary human beings, hiding like us. They were living in the world and they joined together and approached the Divine Mother, to find some means and ways to destroy these demons, to restore peace and joy and harmony. And now, now it is said that that Mother appeared. How? With the forces of all the Divine forces, of all the gods and goddesses. And they took a Divine One form, and that is the form we call Mother Durga. And then, then she got the power in one concentrated place, all force of all the gods put together. And then this demon attacked, this demon who is full of lust, greed and all these evil characters, embodiment of that, he tried to fight with this Divine Mother and ultimately took different forms of and aspects of the personality of the demons. So became one and another and another and endless number of <coughs> forms they took one after another. And then Mother destroyed one by another, one and all. And when that was done, then the gods and they went back to their restored place. So here we find that there is the evil outside. We know that. In our day-to-day -day life, we always see, oh, we cannot live in this world anymore. It has become a devil's world. No? All greed, 
unkindness, lust, anger, infatuation. People filled with this type of thoughts and ideas are overpowering. As a result, the good people in the society, they are suffering. So here comes the question that there are demon outside. Now the question comes, is the demon outside only or there is the demon inside? The demon is some qualities. We are divine by our own spiritual nature. We are ever perfect, ever peaceful. There is no demon, there is no God. It is only the divine. But when the divine is covered with darker mind and ignorance, then the truth, then the power of the good quality is covered up. And as a result, the evil take force and they rule the world. If it is in the outside world, look at that everyday story. How demonic forces are overpowering the good, noble forces. There's a fight all the time. So this, some people say this is a mythological story. Okay, let us accept that. But the philosophy behind this is very important and significant. Our everyday life is full of misery and suffering. Why? That because there is two forces working in our mind. One is the positive force, another is the negative force. One says, I shall be holy, I shall be pure, I shall be selfless, I shall be surrendering, I shall be loving, I shall be caring. Another side says, no, I will be squeezing, I shall be killing, I shall be ruined, running over the all. I will be the king, I will be the person. What I say, that's all. Arrogance, pride, lust, greed, another side is lurking behind. So these two forces are working. According to Vedanta, these two forces come out of the same reality. Same reality is Brahman or Atman, ever pure, ever stainless, all blissful. Only when the darker covering, deep dark cloud comes, there is no manifestation of any light and you see darker appearance of ignorance and as a result of those, all the fear, frustrations and all demonic expressions happen in darkness, in ignorance. And when that ignorance is clean, the dark cloud goes away, little by little, little by little, you can see the shining light coming out. We call it its godly quality. The divine traits are coming out. Not the divine trait is coming out from some unknown area. It is here and now. Only being covered it brings the negative impact. When it is clean, it is we call God, demon is gone and it's all divine, all pure, all love, joy. The society, what a good society and a frightened bad society is what? It's only the me, number of people who are with the good qualities and with the bad qualities. But these are the manifestation of the one truth. According to Vedanta, there is no demon means apart from God. There is no Satan in Vedanta. Satan is that where the ignorance is more, we call satanic character. But the ignorance is taken out. It is, there is, that ignorance comes and goes. But truth does not come and go. The same truth is viewed in two angles. So, we have to, we, we, we live, uh, every day we live in this some few weaknesses of our mind. First of all, we, we are an in, instrument or you are, we are forced 
to run for this objective universe and to trying to get peace and happiness here. Insatiable desire is prompting everyone to go for the other thing in the world and as a result more greed, more attachment, more pride, jealousy, anger, all will be the following forces and takes the person who is a divine quality person into drowning condition of ignorance and suffering. So the impure and clouded person, as we are not basically we are pure, but the mind being possessed by the ghost, this ghost of demanding things, expecting things, thinking about me like this, me and mine, I, that has separated us from the whole universe and that creates a demon in us. So when the mother Durga came and killed the demon, then demon gone means what? The divine quality is already coming. So there comes the, all the godly characteristics. So in individual soul, we will have to find out, is the demon outside or it is inside? Vedanta teaches that don't, there is no demon outside. All demon is inside. And our own thoughts and actions forces us to act in one way. Our past impulses forces us to go in one direction or the other. And that makes us a bound slave. And that, when that obsessive desire is obstructed in any way, then comes the outrage of anger. And anger leads to frustrated anger. You get deluded. You do not know. Is it right? Is it wrong? Shall I do? Shall I not do? So Gita suggests that when <clears throat> one person is obsessed with some desire, desire comes from what? Desire comes from the feeling of incompleteness. I am incomplete. If I get this, I will be happy. Simple formula. Anything we are expecting outside of us and thinking, I am incomplete and if I get that, I will be happy. That is the cause, the starting point of all our degradation. Does it mean that we should not want to be fulfilled? Yes, we should be. We should be. But in what way? There are positive way of moving and negative way of moving. So, but its nature is such, whenever we desire something and that desire is obstructed, someone comes say, no, my anger will go against that person. Some environment says, no, my anger will go there. That Anger will be raised. So any environment, any person, any country, any situation, any which I want to do, what I desire, if it is obstructed, then that will create anger. So last leading to, or desire leading to anger. Bhagavad Gita says, it is a downgrade's journey. You go one, you get obstructed, and then you go down, 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 down. They say that kamat krudho vijayate. When we desire or obsessed with something, and then it is not obtained, any person, environment, any condition, we get angry in that condition and that person with that person. And then when crude anger comes, then there comes some moha. Moha. Moha means 
it is delusion. Then mind gets deluded. What shall I do? It goes, his sanity is lost. He cannot think rightly. Whether it is good or bad, whether I should really go on for my, this unsatiated, obsessive thinking, or I should have to make a break here to find the direction of it, to find the solution in a better way. That is lost. Therefore, it's called some moha. Moha means delusion. And when delusion comes, then we forget. Smriti Vibhrama, our memory gets lost. The person, a dignified person, behaves like a brute at that point. You see, when we, we see so many stories of anger, and also in our life also we have good experience, when you go get into anger, what happens? What remains with us? Have we any sense to think? Is it right? Is it wrong? Is it that I should not behave this way? I should not be doing this thing? They start doing things which ordinary dignified person will never do. As being a dignified person normally does not do, that person will not do. But because under the impulse of that first point is desire, obstructed desire, creating anger, anger leading to delusion, and delusion leading to loss of memory, memory of the dignity of ourselves. And when I lose my own dignity, I feel that who am I? And then your understanding gets clouded and destroyed totally. Wrong thing takes the right position and wrong, right things goes away from my mind. So buddhi naso. Buddhi means this annihilation of our reasoning faculty. Annihilation of our faculty which gives us the right direction in journey, in life. And from that one is totally lost. So these are the step by step downgrade journey. These are enemy. First of all, understand, this is an enemy because it is not taking me towards my divine entity or divine self, which is pure, stainless. But it is taking me to a direction which destroys all my noble characteristics, all my positive thinking. And it's making me a, just a beast. People behave beastly behavior at that time. They do not know. They take a gun and go and killing whom he is killing. He does not know. And throwing things and destroying the furniture and this and that. And who will pay for that again? You have to pay, repair it again. And also the relationship. How, how sweet it becomes the relationship after this anger and frustration and going down like that. Is it not a demon? So this is the question our demon to find inside. Sri Ramakrishna used to sing a song that, you know, this, in this pure land of spirituality, auspicious land of spirituality, I have dug my own well to kill myself. And how you dig? Your six passions. With that, I have all, I pampered them. I never analyzed them. And then that, I created a well, and in that well, I am drowned now. And it is, a, it is covered by a venomous snake. And the snake is just waiting to kill me. And what is that snake? It is the clicking of the time. Kala. Life goes on, Click, 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 click. Huh? It does not stop. We are ending our life. Life is coming to an end. One day gone means we are one day towards death. People say happy birthday. <laughs> it's not a happy birthday. <laughs> Meaning you are close to death one year. <laughs> Last year you were a little <laughs> behind, but now you are close to dying. So this is the death clicking of the time. 
And in this, making this well and trying, pulling ourselves into the drowning condition and the snake is waiting to kill totally, to destroy us. So this is the condition of ours. And therefore it says, the, Oh mother, ah, Oh mother, no fault of anyone, but it is me. I am the creator of all my troubles, all my sufferings. Dus karu noi goma ami shakhato sholile dube mori yoma dus karu noi goma I have created my own misfortune. So which creates is my most misfortune that is the demon and that demon is here. But demon raises his head because the godly power does not exercise their forces. There are so many good people in the world, is it not? But why so much evil going on? Good people has no, no voice. They are goody goody people. They are good people. But evil people, one can go and fight and right or wrong and say and disturb the peace up to hundred people and go away. Go in every situation. Go to a classroom. The whole class is 60 boys and girls are there. One naughty boy. Hmm. Those who are teachers, you know. <laughs> oh, what can they do? And what about the 59 good boys, good girls? They are not united. Their force is not, they have not applied their force. So this is the same thing in us, in a personal life it is happening. There are evil forces, negative forces and good forces because we are made of the three gunas. Sattika quality, Rajas quality and Tamas quality. Because of that, this every personality will have a mixture of all of them. But we have to pamper what power and encourage to grow which energy and what to be stopped. This. So before doing that, we must have to know that what the scriptures are teaching, all the scriptures are teaching, that you will have to conquer this, this evil negative tendencies. These negative tendencies, what is negative, what is positive? Simple definition. That which you takes towards freedom, that which takes you towards joy, blessedness, unending peace, sacrifice, love, caring. Yes, that is positive. And anything that takes you to that limitation, feeling me and mine at the cost of all and destroying the peace of others and the character becoming like a jealous, angry, frustrated, devastated personality, not only creating the problem of for himself or herself, creating the problem for others also. So this is the fight, our fighting the demon. We have to first, to, so to fight the demon, we must know what are the demons. We go to the hospital or to the doctors, and what they do? They don't just treat us. They first go and take the tests, this, that, blood test, this, that, that, that. And then diagonize the disease. So we have to know what is our major problem, where we have to treat the disease of our, our suffering. That we have to call six diseases are there. Shadow Ripu. Six impulsive uh, impulses of the mind. They are the enemies of the mind. The characteristics which stop uh, our our path uh, in the path of liberation. So they are called six. And that out of that first is the desire. Desire as I have discussed. Not good desire. Is, desire may be good. Desire may be bad. Desire for planning to destroy the twin tower is a desire. And desire to give life for the cause of others. That's also a desire. Desire to serve someone who is in difficulty is a desire and to take away someone's property and wealth and everything at the utmost distress creating that's also desire so we have to see what desire is good for me 
So desire is the first foundation. Desire as I have defined desire. Desire is a noble thing. Because we feel incomplete, we want to be fulfilled. But how to fulfill myself? How to feel that I am saturated with my own inner peace and joy? As contrary to destroying the other's peace, other's happiness, other's joy. So karma, fulfillment of one's need, then when it comes, naturally ego lures one to continue seeking of self-satisfaction. How I can be satisfied myself more and more and more. It is insatiable desire. That is called the karma. It's thus compelling desire to indulge, indulge in sensory temptations only. And that instigates always in the wrong thoughts and wrong actions. That it abuses one or all of the senses in the pursuit of that pleasure. It may be sight, sound, touch, lust after an inordinate physical comfort, abuses of the creative sex impulses. All these come in the purview of this desire. And also the desire, as I said, to be liberated, to know who am I, to know that there is one cosmic principle behind all this play of duality. That's also a desire. But this desire, which is directing me to go and uh, make me a helpless person in the pursuit of pleasure, centered around me, mine and my sexes, senses, all the senses. So, you cannot find total satisfaction there. It is known, known forever. Sensate experiences are always limited. And it has its reaction afterwards. But sensate experience can be made divine. That also is possible. Anything I see beauty, I can think, whose beauty? It is the beauty of the Lord. It is the beauty of the one absolute truth who pervades everywhere, permeates everywhere. See, the same sweetness, seeing some sweetness, seeing some love, seeing some manifestation of beauty, we can, that, we can have that and enjoy that in a bigger scale, in a divine level. Or it can make one obsessed and it can take him to a total frustration and devastation. So then this desire... If it is directed towards God, that's good. If it is directed towards the doing good to others, it's good. If it helps anyone, it can remove the suffering of one, even one person in the world, then that desire is good. Rather, we have to pamper that and to stop the other desire because it has never satisfied anybody in the past and it will not do it in future. It is the nature. Because through the limited senses, you cannot experience unlimited joy. That's why the, all the kings and well, each one is attacking the other country. For what? For getting money, wealth, prosperity and then what? All these mean things to be satisfied through the senses. But people like Christ and Buddhas are also there. They have directed their desire. And what they have become? They became the light to the whole world. And full of peace, even looking at them, thinking of them, we have become pure. So this is the first point that is called the karma. And I have talked about the desire when frustrated, it results in anger. The second, another, that is also another enemy. We will have to find out. Ramakrishna said, yes, it is an enemy, but you can make it friend in a bhakti school. Be angry with God. That's also anger. I want to realize you. Why am I not getting? Please help me. And fight with him. Pay your demand. Place your demand. And be angry with God. Yes, that anger is just pulling you in another direction. But the anger 
which arises out of frustrated desire, that is dangerous. And that does not bring good to anyone. So anger demonstration and it demonstrates and, and as a result its peace is destroyed. And when anger comes, reason gets blinded. We cannot reason anymore. Then health, it goes to destroy the health. That, that, that time get into drinking and etc. So in many ways they say abuse, abuse, abuse for the oneself and for the environment it happens. Like impatience, violence, jealousy, resentment that starts when the anger even comes and the lust or the desire is obstructed. So annihilation of the spiritual growth, therefore. Then then when another, uh, another enemy has been defined in the scriptures, that is called the loha or greed. When the greed comes, fail to scrutinize and judge the errors that is ingrained in one's conception and ideas. So they become totally, fully convinced in that getting that by any way. So greed is the another thing. You know, look at that whole world. It is for Ramakrishna has coined. It is for lust and greed. Two obstacles of the modern age. Wherever there is lust, that is disastrous. And where there is greed, that is disastrous. Not that normal life, we should not eat, we should not sleep, we should not have money, we should not have car. Not that point. Point is that this is the insatiated desire and the greed to get more and great more and more and more and more. Endless. And that gives, takes away all the peace, all the strength of mind and one acts not for the sake of duty. They think, they may say that for righteousness but it is undisciplined whims. Likes and dislikes come out of this. So here also important point that this is too much liking and too much disliking. That is an obstacle in our life. Hey, I may like, dislike, but I should not say, be as much reactionary that I cannot tolerate it, I hate it. This, this is bad. Yes, we should live in the world. Yeah, something I like, my nature is one way, your nature is way. But that should not bring hatred. That should not bring anger and frustration with each other. So now greed, and when we become greedy, then what happens? Another problem comes. It is called moha. Moha means attachment. Attachment means I cannot get out of it. I will have to have it. And then even someone helps us in the way it is not pleasing to me. So that leads to attachment. And then when you get attached and get something, ego becomes more powerful. Pride comes. It is called mother. Mother is the pride. <coughs> I am superior. I am the Lord. See, in most of the Puranic stories you will find, when mother is destroying the evil tendencies, is I am the Lord of the universe. Like King Herod. Like Kamsa, I am the king. Who else is God? I am the God of the world. No? So, that type of arrogance and power and pride, eh, wrong pride, which is really uh, not stabilized on the ground of truth. You can be proud of your wealth. How many days the wealth will stay? I cannot take a penny from this world when I die. It is said that you came alone and you will go alone. You will not carry anything with you. So this pride may be there. One may be a rich person. One may be have done enormous thing to gather money, money, wealth. And then what? What for? That is the pride. Even your pride. After death, what happens? There is one, somebody sent me one uh, picture where all the skeleton structures are given. And said, now find out who was the king 
and who was the pauper. <laughs> Find out who was the holy, holy person, who is the unholy person. Find out. It's all, see, in that state. What to be proud about in this life? So that pride gets them at the cost of others. Peace. And matsarja. Another big thing is the jealousy. Jealousy is, it is called the matsarja or jealousy. These are the six. Jealousy comes, jealousy, we all know the impact of jealousy in life. How many house is suffering because of jealousy? How many lives are suffering for jealousy? So these are the enemies to be given. That Gita suggests that Tribhidham Narakashaidam Dwaram there is that these are the three gateway to go to hell. Hindu hell is not permanent hell though but they suggest that these are the three gates which can take you towards hell. Hell is experience. What is hell? The mental agonies, the pain, the suffering, uh, the, all these negative forces which creates in the mind restlessness and anger and all this. So, three things. What are the three things? Kama, Krodha, Tatha, Lobha. Three things. Kama, unsatiated desires or lust, like in uh, unstoppable desire, that is karma, krodha, anger, and that's lobha, that is the greed. These are the three things one should avoid. And Gita suggests tasmat, therefore, eta trayam tajet. One intelligent person should have to give up these three traits of human personality, which is the enemy, tremendous problem for our spiritual growth. It is said, as a result, what happens when this type of thing comes, this animalistic tendency comes, there it brings hypocrisy and ostentation. It brings arrogance. It brings self-conceit. It brings harshness. And it all comes out of ignorance. And being in that condition, do not know what to do and what not to do. Neither know what is called purity. Neither know what is right conduct. Neither they know what is truth in them. They believe this universe is unreal, without a moral foundation, without any God. Born of mutual union due to karma, lust. They are filled with insatiable desire. They are full of hypocrisy, pride, arrogance. They hold on to evil ideas through delusion. They work with impure resolution. Therefore, based on these ideas, the base and boisterous passion regarding gratification of lust as the highest, they take at their life's goal. And then, bound by thousands of ties like this, given over to lust and anger, they strive to secure hordes of wealth for sense enjoyments by unjust means. These are all Gita's advice. So this happened, this happened, this happened. These are the enemies. It takes a person to that. And what they think? That I got it today, I shall get this next. I am the Lord, I am a rich person, I am high born, bewildered by many such fancies and enmeshed in the smear of delusion, addicted to the gratification of lust, they fall into foul hell. Again, the hell means this type of tragic life. And that is destroying the soul as it were. No one can destroy the soul, but for the time being, people suffer so much. So, as a spiritual person, we want to get help from ourselves first. To be spiritual, we are all here for spirituality. And what we always point out, all our problems because of this person, because of you, because of this, because of everything. And I am only holiest of the holy person in the world. All problem is yours. I was there in uh, one uh, interfaith meeting in a, a Carnegie University. And there 
Then Buddhist uh, representative was very nice. He said that, you know, when you think of suffering of ours, we always say, you, 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 you. But when you point out, we never point out here. But it is the God's creation, the world is round. So you put like that, it comes back and enters in you. <laughs> so you carry all those thoughts. So now, we are intelligent people, we would like to understand these are problems. It is not that you are special about that. Everyone has this type of problem to fight with the six passions, this, this obsessiveness of this thing. And we have to diagnose that and to handle that. Try to get over it. Bhakta Vedanta will tell in one way to solve this problem. It is very clear. All these are in ignorance. In your divine self, you are pure. Why are you bothering about all these things? We will have to live in this world. But everything is momentary. Everything is changing. Why not hold on to the unchanging reality? Finish. Vedanta is very straight cut. One. <laughs> Bhaktas will say, Oh, say Narada. Narada will say, Hey, you know, always ask, get out of the bad association. Dushangra Sarvata Yivatajya. Narada in the Bhakti school will say, Dushangra, this is bad association. Your mind is having friendship with bad thoughts. Get out. Don't do, do that. How will you do? Thinking day and night about matter and material objects, you are becoming like that. Think of God. Repeat the name of God. So their suggestion is we don't engage yourself in the world and worldly thought too much eh? and don't indulge yourself in obsessive attraction for the things which are all momentary and avoid the misconduct. And then they say that will go to the holy company. And Gita suggests if you dhyato vishayan pungsha if one thinks of the transitory things of the life, what happens? You get attached to that. And that attachment brings you little desire. And the desire will lead you to step by step as you have discussed. How desire comes? Let me give one small example. You are watching television and you find that there is an advertisement. So you have many uh, knives for your kitchen knives but there comes an advertisement oh this is the knife your knife you are cutting like that how difficult <laughs> see here is one boom $19.99 dollar. just just order now <laughs> so what will happen just a small example then you say wow that's good and you immediately it was not in your thought you never thought that way that I'm having bad time with my knife and is doing well. But that advertisement created an Im impact in your mind and you immediately start uh, setting your phone number and calling and okay, so supply one. So Sangat Association, had you not been present in that advertisement time, you will never think about that. But this is the way. When you keep your mind in noble thought, it will bring noble association. If you keep your mind in a that type of thought where all these types of distraction is going on, you will be distracted. So Gita, Gita suggests that don't do. Dhyato Vishayan. If you meditate on the objects which are not permanent or which is not really needed for you, if you get engaged into it, it will make you obsessed with that because of the association. And that association will lead you a small desire. And the desire will be more and more intensified. And that will lead you to action. Action leads you to earn more money. Earn more money, no time for yourself. Day and night working, working, working. I have no time for myself. So one leading to the other disaster. So if we analyze this way, the scripture says, therefore, you do one thing, that you keep always holy thought, holy company, hmm? and go where your spiritual desire will be uh, coming up, where your, this enemy will be struggling, tell you, no, 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 see, even in this lecture, you know, 
How many people wanted to come, could not come. There are other obstacles come. Priority comes, this, that. But the priority will be there then, that this other priority I have given enough in my life. And I saw that it, it was not satisfying. So let me give a new priority in new things, new desire. New types of attitude towards our old, old problems, which is lurking inside us. So, to diagnose these problems, all these six problems what have been discussed now, that can be directed towards God. I may be attached to God. Someone said to Ramakrishna, what is simple? Ramakrishna said, think of, your, think of God day and night. He said, I cannot do that. She said that I am my nephew. But how, I am to take care of her, the nephew all day and night. I cannot think of God. Ramakrishna said, wow, good. You serve your nephew. You bathe him, you feed him. You think you are feeding Krishna. You are feeding eh, Christ, baby Christ. Think that way. Baby Rama, baby Krishna. Your all service goes on. You are doing the same action. The karma, desire, or my duty, responsibility. is being satisfied the same way putting God, putting God, putting divine. So there is a way out. We are not to be crying and weeping because I have some the tendencies of obsessiveness. Obsessive. Be obsessive for God. Be obsessed for God realization. Ramakrishna was the obsessed person for God realization. Crying and weeping. We do not know much of Christ. That's why many people escape. They don't prefer to do any austerity and practice. Huh? Because that has not been seen in a, in a history. But those, those years, what he did, how much austerity Christ did? Who knows? Buddha, how much austerity he did when he was sitting? We only know he went and sat under a bow tree and said, I will die and I'll do. That's finished. What do we know? How every day, how much struggle he had to go through. And he attained that nirvana. So, this is the practical side of it. That these are the problems in our life that we have to find out those demons and fighting that demon, how? Not with sword and weapon. Sword and weapon was done in the Puranic stories to depict that that is the desire and there are also many different types of demons who have been killed by Divine Mother. There are some Divine, one uh, Asura or demon was killed. When he was killed, every drop of his blood falling and another demon is created. What does it mean? Cut your desire inside you. Similar desires in hundreds and thousands will direct you differently. You don't know. You stop one desire and then you see it finds its own way and another thousand desires come in another way. So that is the symbol. It is called Rakta Bija. Bija means the seed. The demon one demon, and that was destroyed, but his every blood, drop of blood, creates another desire. That means one thought, one desire you cut, you do not know, it is sprouting in another direction. So be careful, be watchful, and direct all your desire to that which will be fulfilling, which will be satisfying, which will bring eternal peace and joy in life. So struggle there, that means spiritual practice. Struggle, struggle, struggle. Struggle means we sit and go out. We, we sit and do japa. Do you find, do you observe what are the demons coming out? And can you work with them to destroy those frustration, anger, lust, greed, unnecessarily, I want this, I want this. Stop your mind. Tell what do you do with that? Talk to your mind. That I have done ma many. I got many things before like that. And I ran many times for those things. Are you satisfied? So how will you be satisfied tomorrow? If I give you tomorrow? Like a friend, talk to your mind. And this is the evil forces. They are not evil by their nature because we have given them the freedom to go in whatever direction it wanted. So it is the to, to master them and when with all this mastery, with this all our effort, when we cannot do 
then say, oh Lord, please take care. And his grace will dawn and then by his power everything will be eradicated. So that is the two forces are necessary. Our own effort and God and Guru's grace. In our scripture it is said, your own effort. Without your effort, no other effort will be helpful. Even God comes, stand before you, it will not be useful because you don't have your own in input into it. But first of all, we will have to find out our problems that karma, krodha, lobha, moha, mada, matsarja, these six, last, anger, greed, attachment, pride, jealousy, these are the six enemies for me. And then finding that to direct it towards God or in Vedantic way, just say, this is all ignorance. Huh? Or in Vedantic, another witness perspective, it is, I am observing the play of my mind. It is nothing me. I am not. I am not. Hmm? So, whatever philosophy you like, utilize that and understand this problem and then try to guide them in a direction which will bring the eternal freedom and joy. So, this is our own effort. That's why two important lesson here. Our own effort is very important. No one can help. There is a statement. Mm. It is said that Guru Krishna Vaishnav Tiner Daya Holo The grace of Guru is there with me. Krishna, the Lord, His grace is there. And Vaishnav, other devotees who are in the path of spiritual journey, they are also graces upon me. But akir doya bina joib. But individual soul, not getting the grace of one, means one's own mind. I. Chare karegal. It's everything is shattered and destroyed. So we read from our childhood so many scriptures. We go to so many holy places. Why you are not transformed? Because we are not working hard to fight with the demon inside. And directing that demon, demon will give up its demonic tendency if he gets proper direction. So that direction, we have to work on that and lastly say, Oh mother, you are the power of the whole universe. You please help me. And then comes mother's case. We call mother, we call father. Vedanta is very easy. Others are very troubled. If I say mother, then say, how, how can be father? But we are a father, mother, whatever you say, Christ, Buddha, Rama, it matters little. All are same. The grace of God will help us. So our effort, but God's grace. Thank you all. So I will close it with another prayer or to mother. Om Vishweshwari Tvang Paripashi Vishwam Vishwatmika Dharay Siti Vishwam Vishesha Bandhya Bhavati Bhavanti Vishasraya Jetai Bhakti Namraha Om Shanti 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 O Divine Mother, the Queen of the Universe, you protect the Universe. As the Self of the Universe, you support the Universe. You are the Goddess worthy to be adored by the Lord of the Universe. They become the refuge of the universe who bow in devotion and love towards you and you alone. Om, peace, peace, peace be unto us all.